and gentlemen, boys and girls, children, above the age of 18, <laughs> it is I, the one, the only, Roberto Negro, and this is Roberto Negro, Thursday, we might have a special treat. I'm not sure. I think it's third. I, you know what? I might have to call this individual in a minute. Hold on. Dad, uh, do we I, do we want to start the show off with a call? Do we want to start the show off with a call? Let's start. You want to start the show off with a call? You want to start the show off with a call? You want to start the show off with? <laughs> oh. I feel like I'm in one of those moods tonight. I don't know why. I don't know why, but I do feel like I'm in one of those those moods. Not in a. Let's watch Hitler movies. Not in one of those moods. I'm not in the mood to be a World War II buff. But when I deal with a lot of wrestling shit in a day, and it's not balanced out with dildos, anal fuck movies, and weed, I feel overwhelmed. I feel overwhelmed, not with work, but with aggravation. (laughs) With aggravation, all right? For whatever reason, wrestling breeds aggravation. It's like a... A fungus, okay? It's like a fungus that just just grows, like like toe jam. And it just grows fucking uncontrolled. It just fucking goes. So it wasn't balanced out today. Normally, a little anal fuck movies, little cannabis. Flashed in with some pro wrestling. Maybe I'll get in some Hitler docs, you know. <laughs> but today was just wrestling from beginning to end. And the frustration is there. And you want to know what the main frustration is? Where the fuck is the ultra-violent underground going to be announced as far as their goddamn venue? Where's the fucking venue? I need to know where I'm going to go. I bought the tickets. I bought the season pass. I laid out $400. And I need to know. Where am I going? Where am I going? It's like a mystery box. The ultraviolet underground. It's a It's a mystery box in a venue and matches. I need to know. You know what? You want to go deep? 
You guys want to go deep? How fucking deep do you want to go tonight? You want to go deep? I'm going to make the men's laugh his fucking asshole off right now. Are you ready? Get ready. Because men's is going to laugh his asshole off. Hey, Rob. Shannon. What's up? You are live on the air, so don't say anything homophobic, racist, okay? Uh-huh. Or, or transphobic. So don't right. say... All right. So, I need to know where am I going to be able to see the ultraviolet underground? Fuck if I know, Rob. <laughs> You have to, but you have to, you have to know a little. I mean, from what I understood when I left, they were going to have their own streaming service. Um, so originally they were going to be on Premier, which is the streaming service that CZW is going to be on. Yes. But then when CZW and, and Pancoast, which is who owns you uh separated uh mike was going to do their own streaming so as far as i know that's that's what's happening um but i that, listen I, but forget the streaming mm-hmm. i want to know where i'm going to be able to go live because i remember when oh. i had to listen to me i had the conversation with you and dj and the original plan was it was going to be at the CZW Studios. Correct. So where's it going to be now? Let, I got a $400 ticket, and it's like a mystery box. I don't know where I'm going. Where am I going? Where are you going? Listen, I actually do not know the answer to that, and here's why. Because. Originally, like you said, the projected first location was the studio. And there was three other locations that we had percolating, right? So then, again, when DJ and Panko separated, all that went away. And then they would have had to have gotten a new location, a new uh, uh, run around the whole nine. Now... They were in the process of working on that right before I separated. So they were supposed to actually make an announcement yesterday about the first location. And they pulled all of that media that said that they were going to make an announcement. So I don't know if they actually have a location for the first show. I, I, that's why I'm saying yesterday was the big announcement. I've been waiting for it. I got my ticket in my hand. I'm ready to go. And there's no announcement. Right. I don't know if they have actually secured a building or a location for that first show. I have no idea. Because they were supposed to make that announcement yesterday. As of the, the time that I had been involved with the project, a, a location had in between because what I was going to do was I was going to work on both UVU and you know whatever projects that CZW had that were dust. It didn't work out that way. It was not sparking joy. So I just decided, hey, I'm not doing that. Um so when I separated from the project, they still had not found a building for the first show. So so what you're telling me is Pankos is no longer doing anything for CZW. Um, as, as far as I know right now, no. But what, isn't all of that equipment in the studio Pankos' equipment? Um, you know, I don't know. Um, but even if it was, DJ would have, uh, would have a mechanism to, to get other equipment. It wouldn't matter. Pankos. Now, mm-hmm. l- now, Shannon. Let me ask. Uh, let 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 let's 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 me and you be. Let's put. You, how many cats do you have? Seriously. How, how many, many? Yeah. How many? How ca- many? How many cats? Yeah. How many? How many cats do you got there? I have one. 
Oh, I thought you had multiple cats, like a cat lady. No, I have one. You just got one. Uh huh. That means Tom Byron, my editor extraordinaire, has you beat. He has two, and he's a sixty-two-year-old man. I have one cat. I am not a cat lady. Rob. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. All right. That's good now. So you listen. You're in better shape than Tom Byron. He's got two cats. And he's a 62-year-old guy. What 62-year-old man has two cats? It's, to me, it's fucking weird, I think. Well, I mean, probably so. But, you know, some people love cats. You know, you would be shocked at how many professional wrestlers have multiple cats. Okay. And, and, the, and the most famous one we know is Teddy Hart. And he's fucking weird. <laughs> I'm fair. I mean, he chokes people out just randomly. Just, just chokes them out. Now, now, listen to me. I know Pankos. Okay, yeah. I know the guy. The, the yeah. guy doesn't. He's a nice guy. I, I've known him since you know, for since back in the 2300 ECW when it was the XPW arena. He's an, he's a nice guy, but Pankos. It's not a guy that is running. He's not cutting checks. He's not doing insurance. He's not. He's not doing that type of managerial activities. So I, it's hard for me to believe that Pankos is the brains behind UVW. In every discussion that I had, Mike was the only backer. Uh, Mike was the only, uh, in, in terms of like once we separated, uh, once UVU separated from CZW, Mike was the only person. There was nobody, there was no other person um, as far as I knew. So like there was no other individual that I was personally made aware of. Um, Mike was the person uh, dealing with all of the finances and, and all of that stuff. So when, so when somebody has an issue, they're going to go to Mike Pankos about, in, about talent, about any of that stuff. Yes, and then there was another. There was another guy uh, named Ryan who worked for Mike that uh, that was that was working with him. That the talent now would be dealing um, with directly. And then there's a couple of people, I guess, um, that would be doing um, marketing and things like that. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know, Shannon. I don't know. So, sounds like a. Uh... Sounds like an elaborate cover for, for I don't know. I, I, my theory is somehow Rob Feinstein's involved in this. People keep asking me that, and that was never somebody that was, to my knowledge, involved or brought up or or anything like that. Um, you know, I never communicated with Rob, spoke with Rob. Rob's name was never brought up. Um, that was never a thing. Hmm. All right. All right. What? What? Uh, anything else? Well, okay. So now, what's what's on the what's on the plate for CZW? Get tell us what's on the plate for CZW. And let, listen, listen. Let me throw this out there. I was uh, I was bored the other night, and normally I watch uh, World War Two documentaries on uh, on Tubi. Not that I'm a Nazi or I, I anything like that. I just am a I'm a World War Two buff, okay? That that's yeah. what we say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I happened to see a MJF video and uh, it said produced by DJ, DJ Hyde. And mm-hmm. I watched this and it was all this C Z W footage and I never realized how Basically, CZW was basically, um, uh, is basically, um, uh, GCW. So I, I literally watched the, this video and Alex Cologne, um, Schlack, 
Um, let's see. Even the ring announcer, uh, Emil. Uh, I, I mean, it was just uh, Ricky Shane Page. It's like all these people that... Everybody. Yeah. Like, at, at what point and how did DJ... I don't know if you if you know this, but how did DJ lose? How did he lose control to to the point where he lost the boys? Like he, like he lost the faith of the boys, and basically they all left and started GCW. Well, I don't I don't think that they all left and started GCW. I think GCW started. And people were still at CZW, but I think CZW did lose a lot of ground during the pandemic because um, DJ felt that it didn't make a lot of financial sense. And and I do understand this and and do agree with it to a certain extent. Um, Didn't make a lot of financial sense to run during the pandemic. Yeah, Um, Yeah, but Shannon, we're talking before the pandemic. You know those videos I watched. Those that was all before the pandemic when they were, when they were posted up at the twenty three hundred arena. There was a good crowd. I mean, it, it was it was it looked good. It was CZW with all GCW people that we know. I mean, right. it's all it was 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 GCW wrestler Joey Janela. I mean, it was all who are the main main draw of GCW today. I mean, Joey Janela's spring break just sold out. And Mm -hmm. here I am watching this guy wrestle and be a main part of GCW. And it was before the pandemic. So at some point, Brett got all those guys to defect. What happened? Your turning point, I think a lot of people would probably say was... There was a cage of death, and I can't remember what year it was, where Brett and Nick Gage sort of breached the backstage area and did this did this whole run in that wasn't planned, and and um, uh, and it, it was like a whole big shaz of a thing, and I think that what I feel like a lot of people felt like was the was the political turning point um and then shortly after that the pandemic happened and so a lot of different a lot of different factors but i feel like that cage of death happened um and then and then the pandemic happened and so you know i think those two factors combined um probably probably made it so that um that was it that was it yeah um, as you know, it's very easy for that creep to happen to, um, you know, when, when people aren't running shows or people aren't running as many shows or, or whatever have you, um, you know, when Brett has run quite fractually, you know, smart business. And, and so, you know, that, that does happen, but, um, you know, I think, I think that was really what happened. That cage of death happened with that run in that Brett did. That wasn't, you know, that was not an angle that was an un- unauthorized where he breached the backstage. And, um, but don't you think it's strange that none of the boys beat the living shit out of fucking Brett and Nick Gage? Um, I think, you know, I think in retrospect, <laughs> you know, I, I think, Everybody that was, especially like uh, Maven Bentley and, and DJ and everybody would have wished they had done things differently on that evening. But like, I, I think when something like that happens, you're just so shocked. Like you kind of don't know what to do. Um, and, and I think that's why um, things probably went down the way they did. And I think also, you know, Maven and DJ have a tendency to err on the side of, you know, not necessarily super confrontational and, and, you know, they're very, you know, we go, they go low, we go high type people. And so, um, and you know this yourself in just sort of observing DJ's behavior. So it's just like, 
I, I think that's that's probably what happened, both the shock factor and, you know, they're just not super fighting confrontational people. Always re- listen to me, Shannon. Always remember, if they go low, you go fucking lower and <laughs> lower than that, and then you cut their fucking feet off and shove them right up their assholes. See, but this is why I'm your PR person, Rob. <laughs> That's what you do. All right, so listen to me, Shannon. It was spectacular to have you on. This is the first time we've ever had the great Shannon, who is not. I would say you are not a cat lady, considering you only have one cat. I, I would I say only that. Have one. Only yeah. One. All right. I'm. I'm gonna. I'm not. I am. I will defend you of not being a cat lady. Exactly. Okay. All right. Listen to me. It was great. If you get any more news. Pass it along to the uh, the the uh, Rob Black Show slash XPW offices, and uh, you have a good night and uh, uh, sweet dreams, my uh, fair lady. Sweet dreams, Robert. You have a good one. All right, all right, all right, everybody. That was Shannon. Okay, that was Shannon. Not. A cat lady, contrary to what some people wanna wanna spew out there. Okay, contrary to Rob Black, to Rob Black show, and uh, we'll be right back. Oh yeah, baby. All right, we're back, ladies and gentlemen. Well, that was interesting, right? Right, that was interesting. Former, former PR extraordinaire and not a cat lady, Shannon, who used to be with Ultraviolet Underground. I didn't even know they, uh, I didn't even know they deleted all the posts that said they were going to be announcing um, what's it called, uh, where the venue is, where the show is, the whole, the whole thing. I didn't know that. I just thought it would be entertaining to, uh, Hit up Shannon, <laughs> who is not a cat lady, okay? Cat Martini said she is a cat lady, too. Well, I don't, listen, I, I, I don't know about that. Here Here's the definition. A cat lady or a cat man is somebody with multiple cats. If you have one cat. That doesn't make you a cat lady or a cat man. Now, Tom Byron, editor extraordinaire for XPW, is a cat man. He's a 62-year-old man who lives alone. No woman. No, 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 no other man. Nobody non-binary. Nothing. With two cats. Okay? Two cats. He's got two fucking cats. That's a cat man. One cat doesn't make you a a fucking cat man or a, 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 a cat lady. Come on. One. Come on now. So, sorry, Martini. And let me eat. Hey, and let me throw this out there. Let me, I'm going to pull back the curtain a little. Let me tell you guys something. All right. Martini. Let me throw this in. This pisses me off. And, and I'm not, um, I, I, I'm not, I'm not, you know, she knows this, but I'm telling the world. So the cat box is in 
one of the upstairs bathrooms. So we have two full baths upstairs. Okay? And there's there's one in the master bedroom, and then there's one in the hall. So the one in the hall, it's got a walk-in shower and a, and a walk-in tub. You know, the, the it's, it's nice. And that's kind of like where the boys use and piss all over the fucking floor. It's disgusting. Every, listen, every toilet in the house smells like a dirty urinal from a bus stop. All right? It, it, it smells like a place that the body would be hanging out at. Because the six-year-old and the three-year-old piss. All over the fucking place. I, I literally, I literally will walk into the bathroom and I'll be like, Martini, come in here. And she'll be like, what? And I'll be, look. I go, look how dirty this fucking toilet is. There's piss. Oh, forget just the toilet. There's just piss everywhere. Well, clean it. They're your boys. They're your boys. So. Bathroom smells like a fucking truck stop. So the upstairs bathroom. Has the fucking cat litter. But this fucking cat. And I tell Martini. But she don't fucking listen. She don't give a fuck. She doesn't give a shit what I say. That's the thing about her. She doesn't fucking care. Okay. That's that's how we've spent 10 years of our life. She doesn't fucking care. I go get a fucking lid for the cat box. Because the cat goes in there. Shits. Covers the shit. And kicks the cat litter out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's what I constantly. Yeah, 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 yeah. So. It's just cat litter. All over the fucking floor. All over the fucking floor. Not enough that it looks like sand at a beach. But enough that when you go in there without your shoes on, you're walking a cat litter. And when you get out of the fucking shower, you step on cat litter. Now I go into the other fucking, you know, the bedroom to get my socks on. And I got to fucking kick off cat litter off my fucking feet. The fucking cat litter's everywhere. Nah, she don't listen. She don't listen. Fucking cat litter on my feet. Doesn't listen. So, the upstairs bathroom smells like fucking children's piss. Full of cat litter. Downstairs bathroom. No cat litter. Just smells like piss. Between the dogs. The cat. And the kids. The fucking house. Smells like a fucking zoo. And we're so immune to it that it doesn't phase us. You know? It's kind of like your own farts. You know how you have, like, your own fart? And, and it's all right. Like, you, you sit in your own fart. You know when you're sitting there and you're fucking, you, you blow off a fart and you clear the fucking room, but you're laughing? Because the fart doesn't bother you. The noxious smell from your asshole doesn't bother you. At times it's pleasant. At times you you waft it up to your nose to smell it more to get a to get more of a of a of a of a more pungent smell. You're like, ooh, let me let me fuck. I want to taste it. Let me fucking taste that. But everybody else is like, oh my god. No, okay. It's like with Schlack, theater brutality. He goes, he annihilates the bathroom 
opens the door. We're all gagging, and he's laughing. He loves it. He loves his own his own noxious gas. It's the same thing. So I got to imagine when the teachers come over. And I'm not saying we leave it like that. Cat cleans the house. I'm not saying she doesn't clean the house. I'm not saying she's a complete, you know, an animal. She's like the zookeeper, you know? Fucking zookeeper that's constantly cleaning out the cages of animal shit, right? And no matter how hard the fucking zookeeper cleans, it, there's always shit everywhere. I'll get Texas. Or, you know, I'll, hey, what, what's going on? I, I you know, I haven't heard you. Oh, I, I had to take Brock and put him in the shower. It's the fourth shit he took. Fourth shit. What the fuck does this kid eat? Four shits. But you know what he does? Sharts. So they're not full shits. They're sharts. So this motherfucker will, will blow off a fart and a little nugget of shit will come out. But the nugget of shit smells so fucking bad that you gotta fucking hose him down. It's disgusting. But anyways, I digress. A cat <laughs> a cat person is plural cats. All right. Ugh, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get I'm gonna put myself in the ultraviolet underground. God damn it. I'm looking at a match card for the collective involving the East West Express versus the Moonlight Express. And I swear to God, it looks like a bunch of fucking 12 year olds are wrestling each other. What the fuck? Ay, ay, ay. It looks like. Literally like 12 year olds are wrestling each other. Oh, fucking man. <laughs> aye, aye, aye. East West Express versus Moonlight Express. Battle of the lunch money. Whoever wins gets to sit in the. The, the, the fucking <laughs> front of the bus. I don't know. God. I don't know what the fuck I'm watching. Ugh. Wrestling. Jesus. I don't even know what to say. <laughs> I don't even know what to fucking say. Uh, literally 12 year olds <laughs> fuck <laughs> uh, yeah alright anyway <laughs> uh, lord All right. Um, we are close. I'm just going to throw this out there. We are close to going live with this streaming service. Now, I'm going to explain to you all why. I'm nervous. Or I should say, let me re-explain 
to you why I'm nervous. And I've talked about this a lot as the lead up. But at the end of the day, you just got to fucking do it. You just got to do it. You got to fucking pull the trigger and you got to fucking do it. And then once you do it, you'll eventually get into a rhythm. You'll iron out all the kinks. And it will be something as simple and as easy and as a routine as fight. Now, I'm nervous about the switch. And I saw some people online bitch about Premiere. Now remember, we had this discussion about Premiere streaming services. My friend who was at Fight left Fight and started this streaming service. Paul, Paul Owen and Josh Smirnoff or Shurnoff, whatever the fuck his name is. Now, why I didn't go with them was basically they are a and I and I know he'll get upset if he hears this, but a carbon copy of fight, except they care more and you know all of the things that a new company will tell people, tell clients that they're trying to bring in. But payouts are the same. Things of that nature were all the same. But their fight or their Roku apps weren't done. Uh, Their, uh, uh, you know, uh, fire... Uh, Apple, all of the streaming boxes, I guess that's such an old term, but weren't ready yet. And that made me go, well, if I'm going to leave one service and get in bed with another service that is trying to compete with that service... I'd probably look like a jerk off by going to a new service and that service doesn't have all the bells and whistles as the service that I left. So I didn't make that move. Plus, I always said if I left fight, it would be for my own system. That way... I can rise and fall on my own terms. If I want to do a live stream right now of jerking off and charge $10.95, I could do it. If I want to geo different territories and do special promotions for people that live in India or special promotions that people live in Japan and if you live in Europe they give you a free big fucking Joe uh, you know autograph trading card with every purchase of the pay-per-view all of those things I could do so I always said I would never leave fight Unless it was for my own service. But there's a lot of pitfalls that come with that. And one of those pitfalls is we're not ready to have the Roku apps and the Google or the Apple TV apps. And that's why we all had this conversation what, a month and a half ago, where I took a poll of all of you 
and said, when you watch the streams, how do you watch them if you want to watch it on your television? Some of you said Roku. A lot of you said you watch it right on your computer or you watch it on your phone. And I said, well, if you watch it on your phone or if you watch it on your computer, then you're not going to miss a beat with our service. And then I brought up the Chromecast. And various televisions who are set with Chromecast automatically find the device that you're using and will then mirror that video onto your television. And I brought up how at Extreme Gifts, one of the TVs there have Chromecast. So when I'm doing test runs on the contact, a little window pops up and says, do you want to Chromecast this? And I go, yeah. And then it shows the televisions that I can Chromecast too. And I'll say a Vizio... Or I'll say a a Panasonic or something of that nature. So if you have an 85-inch Vizio, you can then stream the pay-per-view onto your 85-inch television and enjoy it as if you would with the Fight app on Roku. So that took away my nervousness, but I'm still nervous because fans of XPW who are creatures of habit, who've been ordering their pay-per-view via fight, are now going to have to go to a different system. And that's nerve-wracking. I had this conversation with the Mins. Mins said, do you think we'll lose business? I said, well, I don't know if we'll lose business, per se. But I'm sure there will be people that might get aggravated. Because... They're used to doing it a certain way. And I think that could be an issue. Until people get more familiar. But, yes... At the end of the day, the question becomes, will this work out in the long run? And I think it will. Because there's a lot of... There's a lot of flexibility we have to promote the product in a way that wasn't there before. There's a lot of flexibility to promote the product using individual wrestlers that were not there before. Listen... I could make a code, give it to the wrestler, and tell him to push it, give him a piece, and we've had this conversation before, this is a repeat, but give him a piece, (laughs) 
of what he generates. And at the end of the day, you could actually see just how popular these wrestlers are. You literally will see what kind of following they have. Because if you give them their own private code and say, here, I'm going to give you $10 for every fucking join. Here you go. You get 10 people to join, he's made 100 bucks. In theory, somebody could make more off joins than what their payout is on that show. So I could see how many people clicked on their link, how many people bought that link, where that traffic was coming from, from the link. So if they post that link to their Facebook, to their, uh, you know, Instagram, to their Twitter, I could say, hey, you had no action on Facebook. So, there's a lot of pros. And if the artwork is done tomorrow, which by all accounts it will be, We'll be able to make the official announcement and you'll be able to buy the pay-per-view. You'll be able to uh, check out the site. You'll be able to push the site. We'll be able to start making the codes... That will say, you know, Schlack, Masada, uh, you know, whoever. And go, here, this is what you're going to get. Go crazy. And then basically, rather we do it that night. In our hotel room. Or we do it over. Zoom. I'll probably do it that night. In the hotel room. And then each. Of the boys and women. Can come down. To the suite. I could push a button and go. There you go. Take a look. There's your final tally. Your code got 325 hits and three people joined. So here's 30 bucks on top of your pay. I guess you're not as fucking popular as you say you are. Now get the fuck out of here. Next. I mean, seriously, I, I, I mean, now when a wrestler tells you, I'm popular, look how many followers I have, look how many Instagram followers I have, oh, okay, well, I guess they're just a bunch of fucking looky-loos, because they ain't buying nothing, 
And they sure the fuck ain't buying anything that you're selling, motherfucker. So I guess your 300,000 followers amounts to shit. Because if you got 300,000 followers, and you got all these people that like your pictures, and they like your little fucking cute tweets. Look, I got 1,300 likes on this picture. Hmm. So let me ask you this. Why does nobody buy any pay-per-view that you're in? Especially when you're telling them that you're making money. Because think about it. Every single one of these wrestlers, when they get this code, should tweet out or Facebook out, Hey, all you fuck sticks that are fans of mine. I need you to buy this fucking pay-per-view. You know why? Because I'm going to make ten fucking dollars on this pay-per-view. So if I get a hundred of you fans that buy this pay-per-view, do the fucking math. Do the fucking math. What does that equal? Do the math. Want to do it together? Ten. Okay. Times ten is a hundred. So if these wrestlers can get a hundred of their followers to buy. The pay-per-view. That's a thousand dollars in their fucking pockets. Every fucking wrestler should be tweeting and Facebooking and Instagramming To all of their people, buy this pay-per-view because I'll make $10. Buy this pay-per-view and I'll make $10. All the money's not going to the shitty promoter, Rob Black. Fuck him. He's an asshole. Buy this pay-per-view. I'm going to make Or $5, or $8, whatever the fuck it is. So, I don't know. I'm nervous. Because we have to get everybody... To get on board. And push the fuck out of it. And if somebody has a question about it. Answer that question. So. We'll see. Hopefully tomorrow. At some point. We will. Be live. At some point. So, all right. Oh, it's Rob Black's Rob Black show. We're gonna take a quick break. When we come back, we will wrap things up. Gifts. 
From pop culture gifts to adult fun, t-shirts, mugs, socks, fun, topical gifts for all ages. Then there's mature fun, massage lotions, naughty games, toys, and lingerie. Extreme Gifts specializes in Delta 8 CBD, cartridges, edibles, vaporizers, and vaping liquids. The selection of glass products is amazing from Kratom, Kava, Flower, and so much more. Extreme Gifts, 1694 Penfield Road, next to the original Steve. We are back, ladies and gentlemen. It is Roberto Negro. Um, If you haven't bought your tickets yet, buy your goddamn tickets. Okay? You understand me? You understand me? Big Joe versus the body. Match one. Big Lou versus Drake Younger. Match two. Schlack. Maga Butcher. Masada. And a mystery partner for the Butcher. Watch these four guys tear the shit. Out of the Pomona Fairgrounds. Cat Martini having, yes, having a Miss Extreme contest. You want to know what's in the Miss Extreme contest? I'm going to tell you what that Miss Extreme contest. One, swimsuit. The participants will be judged on how they look in a fucking swimsuit. Two. Trivia. Or world events. And then three. Talent. What is that talent? Maybe it's deep throating a kabasa. What girl can take the kabasa down all the way their throat? I don't know. But I know Cat Martini's going to be hosting this. And it's going to be off the hook. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be spectacular. Just those four things should give you reason to show up on February 18th, Pomona, California. Pleasures of the Flesh. Get your tickets now. It's Rob Black. It's a Rob Black show. You guys are the best. We'll see you tomorrow. And we're going to have a special guest Thursday. Yes. A special guest in studio surprise. I can tell you who it is. It's Rob Black, Rob Black Show. Peace out. I'm gonna go eat dinner.